This is a true story about a woman who had a dream. This happened a couple thousand years ago in a land far away from here. So there's this woman dressed in beautiful clothes, sleeping in a beautiful home, but she's tossing and turning, tossing and turning, troubled in her sleep. She didn't get any rest. In her sleep, she was dreaming about a man she had never met. And so she wakes up wondering what her dreams meant. This woman is married to a governor, a man of power. And in the governor's house, there is a commotion. Well, there's always a commotion in the governor's house, but this time it was different. The atmosphere was different. And there was a crowd there full of emotion. They were angry. The air was pregnant. Everything felt like something big was about to happen. She heard something about a trial. And then she heard something about a man. She approaches someone and asks, what is this all about? And they point to a man. And to her shock, who she sees was the man in her dreams. The same man in her troubled night of sleep. Her heart is filled with fright. So she rushes to her husband and she warns him. When he sat down on the judgment seat, his wife said unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with that just man? For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. Matthew 27, verse 19. This woman's name was Claudia Pilate. Her husband's name was Pontius Pilate. And this man's name was Jesus Christ. She now knew the purpose of her dream, to tell and warn her husband, to tell him that this man was innocent. Do you know what the good news is? Her husband knew it. Do you know what the bad news is? It didn't matter. And the governor said, why, what evil did this man do? But they cried out all the more, saying, let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that a riot was brewing, ready to happen, he took water, he washed his hands. He washed his hands before the mob, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. And so that was it. He washed his hands, but his conscience was not clean. He knew that Jesus was innocent. He knew he had the authority to decide. It was him not the mob that was governor. He was the ruler and they were the ruled. So his wife Claudia watched in fright as he continued to make the wrong verdict, the wrong decision, the wrong choice. Her dream was for nothing. Her warning was for nothing. And so they began to strip this man named Jesus and on his exposed skin, whip him again and again. His crucifixion process has now begun. It would be one of the most terrible crucifixions. And the crowd, they were cheering. In a twisted sense of justice, a known murderer was released, acquitted. And instead, this innocent man was condemned to be tortured and crucified, all because of what? The official sentence? Saying the wrong thing. Something about him being the king of the Jews, which was not politically correct. Something about him being the Christ, the son of God, which was not culturally correct. He was being crucified for not being politically correct and culturally correct. This reminds me of the words of a prophet who only became famous after he died. And here's what he said. Thus saith the Lord, cursed be the man that trusteth in man and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. Jeremiah 17.5 And so I'm here to tell you, it is a terrible thing to be controlled by what other people think. For you to be deceived into thinking that you don't have a choice when in fact you do. You do have a choice. You don't have to do as they say. It's all right to make them unhappy with you. They will tell you that if you don't do this, or don't say that you're part of the problem. They lay their judgments on you and you in turn let them do the thinking for you because you have something to prove when you shouldn't. 
Jeremiah 17.5 shows us that when you live by the thoughts and the opinions of others, you're making them your source. You're making them your strength. You're making them your Lord and your idol. And when that happens, your heart departs from the Lord. Jeremiah 17.5 is one of those verses which I believe carries the same amount of truth when you read it in reverse. So let me do that for you. Thus says the Lord, Blessed is the man who trusts in Him, who makes the Spirit of God his arm, whose heart draws near to the Lord. I'm here to tell you that we can move from man-fearing to God-fearing, from trying to please man to trying to please God. And we do that only when we realize that it's not by might and it's not by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord that this life is one and there's no other way. So stop listening to the mob. You have a choice. And I know your heart bears witness, just like Pilate's did just like Claudius did. And you know, the world today looks and sounds so much like the palace that Claudia woke up to that morning. So many voices, so many voices. And the man in Claudius' dream is somewhere in the situation. Do you see him? Can you hear him? Will you find him and listen to him?